Oh, the attack of the drone. The drone cam. Okay, anyway. Todd and Aaron, MorningStream, GetBarDaily.com. Still have my drone. If you're missing a drone, ended up on my front yard. Here it is. I turn off the lights. I have no controller for the drone, so there's two people who have useless plastic items now. There you go. Are um, keeping it why? Because I'm going to hunt down the owner. Okay. Because it's got to be within like 400 feet of the house, right? All right. There's many, many epic things. Oh, Todd things, and Aaron here. Hi. Many epic things today. Um, first of all, Todd is going to tackle their Chaducan again this Thanksgiving. Oh, let's show. Let's show. So we're going to show you the epic step-by-step -step video today so you can actually learn how to make it. It is really amazing. It's gross. Well, no, it's interesting, except for the part you told me about at the butcher shop. That just horrified me. Well, we're going to show the whole video. Do we have the short? Here, here. This is like you're trying to bring it back to life. <laughs> it's, it's, seriously. It's Frankenberg. Oh, it looks like a little suit. It oh, does. Poor little thing. Ooh, a close-up yeah. of you lacing up the turkey. Dang. Yeah, but you have to admit that is the most delicious, a naturally good thing ever. You guys were crazy about that. All right. Do you want to go to the Morning Mountain Cam? It's brought to you. No, we're not going to do that no? this morning. No, it's too dark. Okay. All right, there it is. Brought to you by Black Diamond it's Experts. Dark. Experts in electric plumbing, <laughs> heating, and air. That's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, and it's still warm. This is going to be an epic week, like 50s and 60s. What is Thanksgiving? Uh, it's like 58. Six, 61. It, and it's like is sunny. It? Like 58 Which is and sunny. Cool. So that's perfect. So we can throw the children outside in the backyard and, and be fine. I know that Thanksgiving is coming because I already, uh, Mary Helen, my mother-in-law, mm -hmm, mom, uh, already did the first shot across the bow about gravy. Well, maybe we should discuss that later. We also have the fact that you're saying everything wrong. You th might have thought you were pronouncing them correctly. You aren't. Also, did Paris Hilton invent the selfie? We'll find really? out. And who's put a death sentence on Trump? Which one? I think. Not All right, sure, let's let's start let's start with this because it's pretty cool. We told you last week about um, this great group from Utah. They had gone and they did some crowdsourcing. Um, they got seven hundred thousand dollars in private donations, and the group went to Puerto Rico and uh, they brought solar powered uh, batteries, lights, uh, so, yeah, lights of all kinds of different things, the flashlights, everything that they needed. The trick was because they were going over and you're not allowed to like ship stuff right now they just don't have you know the transportation for it they had to carry everything in their suitcases and they're wow. allowed two suitcases each and so everybody basically went with the clothes on their back and said i'm not changing my underwear for three days well no actually i understand what they did is they just one person wore it and they just changed off oh, every yeah, day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, lieutenant governor spencer cox had to come back a little earlier but he said it was amazing she said he said i was not prepared for the experience he said it looks like a bomb went off he said the devastation is overwhelming. He said it looks like the hurricane just barely hit. He said repairing the electrical gear grid is definitely the most pressing need. And he says the challenge now is getting thousands of new power poles to the mainland to Puerto Rico. Right. And at night he says it's pitch it's pitch dark and he says it's scary. I mean he says there's nothing around you. You don't there's like no little pool of light at a seven eleven you can go to. He said it's yeah. he said it's literally like a battlefield. Yeah which think was about, pretty intense. Think about going camping and when you turn off all the lights, now walk away from the campfire, black, just black. No reference to it. And how many batteries can you actually have? It was funny, though. He said most people he were really surprised that it was just ordinary Utahns that did the relief effort, and it wasn't a government-led one. He said the thing that was sad, he said everyone thanked us profusely, but they think that the mainland's forgotten about it. Oh. And so that's a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm impressed by the fact that he went over because I'm sure it was not a particularly comfortable trip. Right. But they said that it was such a good thing to do, and it was. It's the number one most pressing need. They freaking need light. Yeah. So I think that was so smart. And they need power. Think about the last time you went without power. Just think about refrigeration. How much ice, you know, every day getting ice every day, food that doesn't spoil. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Um, I didn't realize how... Badly, I was saying this stuff, and I feel kind of like a moron now. They did this whole list of things that you were saying completely wrong. Really? And you think that you're saying them correctly, and then you sound like a moron to anyone who actually knows. Like what? We're all going to learn together. Ikea. Get out. Ikea, I, I always thought was... I, let me try saying it. Oh, a store where I get lost every single time I go, and their shopping carts go sideways, which is stupid. I like Ikea. Is we're, it set? Is we the call word? It, we pronounce it Ikea. It's actually Ikea. Ik. Kia. I Ikea. For, to who that is normal? The Swedes who invented it. Ikea. Hmm. I know. Okay, Adidas. Adidas. We Adidas usually pronounce it Adidas, shoes, right? right? It's Adidas. 
No, it's not. Adidas. Is where how it's where is it? That? In Over Spain? in Italy. In Italy. Adidas. Adidas. So we said it wrong. All right, Zagat. These these are the guys, of course, who do the really cool, Zagat. They're, yeah, they're the ones who do the really cool uh, restaurant reviews, right? Zagat. They're famous. Zagat. They're world famous. Zagat. No, it's Zagat. No, it's not. It's Zagat. 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 My name is Todd. If you were in Italy, perhaps it would be, but it's Zagat. All right. And we're saying it wrong. Right. Nutella. Now, this one makes me so sad. Oh, this oh, is oh. the sacred, Let me sacred say, chocolate spread. How else could you say that? Nutella. Nutella is the way we said, right? Yeah. Well, this is Australian. It's actually Nutella. It's supposed to be pronounced Nutella. That's not right. It's true. That's not And here's the killer. Uh, Porsche. Oh. I actually heard people pronounce it the other way. I'm Ellen like, you guys are so dumb. Ellen DeGeneres' partner. Porsche. Yeah. Porsche is how you pronounce it. And Porsche, by the way, is mis is spelled differently than the car. Oh. She's actually spelled P-O-R-T-I-A, Porsche, the way uh -huh. you pronounce it. But Porsche is Porsche. Well, since we're talking... Is that it? Well, there's more, but... You know, since we're talking Hollywood now, suddenly... Uh, I didn't know we were, but okay. Yeah, I think we should talk about the American Music Awards last night. Oh, yeah. Now, first of all, right? i got to tell you, uh, Diana Ross is a vampire. She does not age. She got the Lifetime Achievement Award, which, you know, is easy. She's 73 years old. She comes out in five-inch stripper heels and goes down this huge stairway singing the entire Without way. Without a railing, and she sang. And I wouldn't do that. And she gets to the bottom and said, great, give her some water and a bench to sit on. And then she sings something else. And you're like, okay, but she's going to die. And then she sings something else, and she goes through. She sings like five things, and she is... She looks amazing and natural. I mean, she's been taking sheep embryos or something because that she, woman looks incredible. She is a vampiress. I was not impressed with Bruno Mars. Uh, Bruno Mars won, like, Entertainer of the Year, Performer of the Year, and he kind of... Let's do our impression of this. Okay, you do okay, it. Okay, so Aaron's so on I'm applauding stage. Jared Leto's the one she's, who, who awarded who goes, Hey, Bruno, where are you? Because nobody's coming up on stage. And I'm in, I'm, which he said, he said, I'm in a minivan, and he goes like this. Hey, thanks, everybody. It's great to win. We'll see you later. I'm in a minivan. You're like, oh, okay. Thank you for absolutely what a nothing. What yes. I thought it was a little weird. It is a little weird. Okay, BTS, that's the adorable uh, South Korean boy band. Yeah. They have... It was. They frighten you. It was troubling. They, they frighten you. Don't no, they? boy bands as a whole freak me out just because it's like so manufactured and so right. scary, and you're like, <clears throat> and they're like carefully dressed. I mean, even One Direction frightened me, but these guys, they're amazing dancers, and it was hysterical because the producers were complaining the screaming was so loud in the auditorium right. that it actually shorted out the sound system. So they actually had to reboot it. So there was, I guess, there was like a gap in the audio. That's they had to like funny. race and try to recalibrate everything in between the break. But yeah. It was that loud. They're and, adorable. I mean, they're just adorable little munchkin creatures, but <laughs> but they're scary because they're so. Um, you were talking. You were talking. Well, they are. Well, yesterday like before that, koalas. Uh, they're your, just precious little koala boys. Your mom came to the house, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she so pretty. She was dressed so nicely yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and uh, took time to break away from the conversation with her daughter and came over. And she said she leaned in. She said, "Hey." Um, if you cook the turkey a little earlier, uh, I could come over and help you with the gravy. Now, let me give you history on this. Uh, I started cooking for their family this year. It's 15 About so 15 far. 15 at least, yeah. And uh, and we're all sitting down. I'm like, boom, I did pretty good here. I'm good. And her sister Jenny comes in, and, and uh, followed by her mom. They were like, where's the gravy? And I wasn't born a gravy guy. My family was not New gravy. Englanders don't have gravy. We have no time. We're being chased by animals. And, stuff. <laughs> I don't know. and so I'm like, oh, you know, we'll get it maybe next year. And they were like started rummaging through pots and pans, finding that. Oh, yeah, they were not going to, that one was not going to. I didn't realize it was so important. So from then on, everyone's like, what is this? I'll bring the gravy. We'll bring the gravy this no, time. No, I said, I got gravy. I'm, I will. That, I have to admit, for mom, that was impressive. I mean, she started early this year. Usually she'll check with me the night before, like, oh, do you think Todd needs some help? Should I should I make a turkey, leave it at home, but bring the dripping so I can make the gravy? And I'm like, I think he's got it, Mom. But this is like this is like almost a week in advance. Mary Helen kind of planned early this time. So First shot across a, the bow about the gravy. That's a tactical move, I'm thinking. So there will be plenty of gravy. Matter of fact, because I cooked a turkey about four weeks ago, and I took all the juices and I froze them. 
So now that put that in your pie hole. You should have seen the expression on your face. It's very funny that that, that is now like our Thanksgiving tradition, the obsession over the gravy. It was very funny. I talked to a friend of mine, and everyone has that one weird thing that you do. And uh, she had this little chihuahua, and uh, they used to dress it up like a Thanksgiving turkey. Had a little costume, a little suit. And then she gave the kids sticks to put, to put you know, pretending they were like the blunderbuss or whatever. The pilgrims. Shoe. Yeah, the, the pilgrims used. And then the kids would chase the dog <laughs> on the yard, and they would make the sound. Great for and, everybody except the dog. The dog would fall over and pretend that it was dead. He had actually been trained. But as, you know, he'd gotten along in years, he started losing weight, and the little costume <laughs> would be tripping him up. And she showed me a video. It was just the saddest thing I'd ever witnessed. And he passed away this year, and there was extensive discussion about whether or not they could get, like, a stunt chihuahua for the day. Like, does anyone rent a stunt chihuahua that we could Excuse dress me. up in a pilgrim? Can, you know, we, a can we borrow costume? a chihuahua? We want our kids to chase it around with guns. <laughs> Would that be okay? I was feeling better about our whole gravy debacle tradition. Cause oh, I mean, you guys are, I, you know, and first of all, my ch turkey is not dry, number two. Um, but when you bring the gravy to the table, it's kind of like you just drop it in the middle of the table and you back away because they're cra crazy. I'm sorry this has been so traumatic for it you, has sweetheart. Been. I it's can like see that now. It's like the focus of Thanksgiving cooking for me. All right, now, I, I, I love anything that starts out horrible and turns out epic because usually it involves, like, native animal cunning. And it, this whole entire town are the most brilliant people, I think, that I've ever heard of because this starts out as, like, a truly... This is going to be like a reenactment of whatever happened in Charlottesville. I mean, there is, it, there it, that's is, where we're going. There's a couple ways to deal with a problem, right? And if you have a problem... Usually, being creative can win the day. So, in Germany, there is a small town, and it's where Rudolf Hess, famous Nazi and killer of many people, uh, was born. And so, on his birthday, the neo-Nazis get together, and they do a parade now in you, their town. Now, you can imagine the heritage for most Germans is a very fractured thing, and it's, it's very difficult for them to look back on that time. And it's hard. You don't want to look back on that period of time in your country and, and have to keep feeling that shame. So for these guys, it seems like possibly this could be the worst thing that they would happen. And they couldn't do anything about it, you know? It's because, like, you know, you get a parade permit and blah, blah, blah. No one gets turned away, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and it's horrible. And every year, the, some people would just leave town so they didn't have to deal with it. And then they're yeah, out, the so neo-Nazis are out shopping and staying in your hotels, and it's just like... Wearing a swastika, and you're like, that's great. So what they decided to do is they decided to uh, make it a fundraiser. <laughs> so the neo-Nazis were coming anyway, right? And so what they did is they did a marchathon. And <laughs> what they did is they, they put up signs. Look at it, it's all pink and polka dotty. <laughs> and and some of the signs will say, some of the signs will say, what would the Fuhrer think? And then uh, they put them on the ground too. So every time they stepped over it, they're raising more money. <laughs> and it's for a group that fights Neo-Nazis and the alt-right. Yeah, you know? human rights, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And it's so funny. And they raise all this money. And so what they do is... And they're like, thank you. We've raised so far. We've raised 10,000 kroner. You guys are doing great. Keep going. Keep marching, you krauts. Uh, and they, <laughs> oh, it's okay, sour kraut. That's where it came from, you know. Nazis. Sour These are the kraut. Nazis, though. They keep marching, you I Nazis. Anyway, go on. So anyway, um, so they put out snacks for them. <laughs> And water. Keep going. Keep those keep, electrolytes keep, up. Keep walking. Keep them going. Keep marching. You're doing great. That is a brilliant thing. Isn't that hysterical? And they're just going to keep doing it until and, they and get how tired. How did the neo-Nazis respond to that? Though? They That's just keep the walking and eating the snacks. <laughs> Washington, uh, Huffington Post put it out, and there's some other towns who are now going to do it. That is so funny. Because so, you have to allow them the right to, to do that. So but. every step, you're helping eliminate you. So you know that in some part of them, every time they cross over the next milepost, they must be like... Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's just hilarious. I'm sorry, but that makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, so now we have to address history once again, and this right. is because of Paris Hilton. I Paris don't think Hilton. I've ever mentioned that woman's name on air before on our show. Why? Because I used to take great pride in people who were worthless yet famous, not ever mentioning them. And thus Robert Redford doesn't like her because she would show up uh, partying at uh, at uh, Sunbird Music uh, at Sundance. Film Fest. Yeah, Sundance, and uh, he said that's not what this is for. This is for artists. Who yeah, are, this image is sucking for us. And yeah. then she then she went to Burning Man, and that kind of ruined it for us last year. Just one little part. 
But in any case, she uh, put up a picture of her and Britney Spears and said, it's been 11 years ago today that Britney and I invented the verse selfie. She always does the same face. Always. I mean, always. Once you've got it down, you go with what you know. Always. That's good. And so immediately... I don't people, have a face. Immediately, people started putting up pictures going, no, no, no. There was a great one of Thelma and Louise. Remember when they took the selfie when yeah. they were in the movie? And there's right. a whole bunch of other great ones, like Madonna actually in Desperately Seeking Susan was laying on the ground, and she used one to do to her pout and take a picture. Okay. So this is... Now we're going to the early 80s, but then there was Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science Bill guy. Bill Nye, the science guy. Caught on the airport. And look, and look it's the cheesy little old-fashioned camera. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not its not even a cell phone. It's a cheesy old-fashioned camera. He had the selfie, and that was in the uh, early, early 80s. Okay. But then, if you're really going to argue about who took the first selfie, right. we have to go all the way back. Who's that? This is from the National Galleries. Even they responded to this. They said, this is the first ever photograph selfie in history. It's taken by Robert Cornelius in 1839. So he had the bulb because he used that squeezy bulb thing to make the shutter work? 1839, Paris. 1839, you did not invent the selfie. Now, is she claiming that she invented it? Yes, she is. That's kind of like yelling and go, hey, I developed herpes. <laughs> You're welcome. The letter E is from me. That's right. I invented the There's vowels. no I in her. So anyway... So there you go. All right, uh, we've got to go to Daisy. She's in the Get Part Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, you can find out all kinds of information about a million different mortgages options that are available for you. That's fink-mcgregor.com. Also by All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Now you can, oh, actually, let's go to the Vein Clinic first. Um, the veinclinic.com, I actually had a procedure done there that was pain-free on varicose veins. If you want to learn some of your options, you have to talk to these guys. Go to theveinclinic.com to set your appointment and buy all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. This is the perfect time to check and make sure everything's up in shape for winter like your furnace. They have a $69 fee right now that takes care of everything. It's a perfect time to call. It's allutahplumbing.com. Good morning, my dear Daisy. What is going on today? <coughs> Thanks, Todd and Aaron. Hello, everyone. Here's what's making headlines Monday, November 20th on GetPartDaily.com. Salt Lake City homicide detectives have unearthed the remains of a man they say was murdered in the summer of 2011. The body was found after an all-day search Saturday following a tip to police. The suspect, 56-year-old Carlos Treviso Acosta, owner of Los Lobos Paving and Construction in Salt Lake City, is in custody. Police say he killed and buried the victim, a man known only as Ignacio, after a heated argument. Anyone with information on the victim's ID is asked to call Salt Lake Police. There's growing concern over the fate of a missing Elko County man who vanished more than two weeks ago. Family members say Spring Creek resident Keone Miles, 24, was last seen November 3rd at the Hampton Inn in Elko. He's believed to be suffering from depression. Elko County Sheriff's investigators have tried tracking Miles by pinging his cell phone, but say there's been no activity on the device since the day he vanished. Miles is described as 6 feet 7 inches and 170 pounds with black hair. He drives a dark blue Chevy Cruze passenger car with Nevada license plate 668A91. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the Elko County Sheriff's Office. And it was a tense scene in North Salt Lake overnight where a heavily armed man wearing body armor held his wife and children hostage inside the North Stamford Avenue home for several hours. Police were called to the scene about 8 p.m. and determined the wife and kids were being held in a bedroom. SWAT team members created a diversion allowing the mom and kids to escape. Police then entered the home and took the suspect into custody without further incident. And time now for the Wasatch Front Weather Report, brought to you by our warm and fuzzy new sponsors at Brio Technologies, Utah's toppermost of the poppermost when it comes to audiovisual specialties. After a couple of days of winter-like weather, looks like we'll be warming up a bit. Highs Monday and Tuesday will be in the upper 40s to mid-50s before jumping into the 60s for the remainder of the week. We'll see a slight chance of showers Monday afternoon and evening, but after that, we'll have a bit of a dry spell. That's it for now. For more local headlines 24-7, go to getpartdaily.com. And for now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. Hey, dear Daisy. All right, so John, John and All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air. First of all, they're doing a lot of remodels right now. And one of the things that's really interesting about this is the fact that, yes, of course, they're, they're certified. Yes, of course, they're insured. 
they have the permits, they have all the things you're looking for. But I didn't know this. A lot of people, when they do a remodel, uh, the person, the contractor will come to you with five or six different tiles to choose from. And what John does is John jumps in the car with you and you go to the tile place, not the, not the, the, the home center. They go to the actual tile places and start picking out materials. Oh, you need some granite. Guess where you're going? You're going to the granite store. And he does this so he can put together the look you're looking for. I mean, this is an investment. It is your home. And you know what? A nice bathroom is just makes your life a little better, doesn't it? Walk in, brand new shower, nice glass doors, make it bigger than it was before. And John can help you with that. Right now, of course, he does the furnaces and he does those kind of things and electrical. Uh, if you need a furnace to checked out, let's say you got a new place. Is it safe? Is it safe for your kids? Is it efficient? Is, are you doing the right things for it? All you'd have to do is $69. Just give them a call at allutahplumbing.com. All right, so what do you have for me? Tell me something good. All right, tell me something good. Now, this it, is really sweet. We actually did this for the first time this year because we now live on a street that doesn't get a lot of trick-or-treaters, so we wanted to take out Zoe and... Todd decided to go do something with Zach. So we left out the standard bowl of candy with the note that said, help yourself, but please leave some for others. I don't think that's standard. I think because my belief is that the first kid there, the first rotten kid, is going to grab it all and move on. Most of the time, we've always had very polite kids who would just take one, and I'd have to urge them to take more. In any case, you know, we've all seen the sign. Well, uh, Hayden Chapel uh, does this in... Um, he was trick-or-treating, and he went to the Robinsons' house yes. in Idaho Falls. And they like leaving out a camera because they see the kids do a lot of funny faces. So they leave out their bowl of candy so that they can take their daughter trick-or-treating. Right. And they say, do a trick and take a treat and smile. You're on camera. So they get like some cute footage of kids doing well, funny things. that's a great way so they won't steal all the kids. Isn't that cute? Well, no, but the kids do like cute little things, and they, they get to have a fun little video to watch later. Yeah. And so um, Hayden shows up. He's dressed as Eleven from the Netflix series Stranger Things, which I just started watching. Oh, Eleven. <gasps> Anyway, long story. But he saw that the bowl was empty, so he did kind of a little jump twirl for the camera, and then he was starting to walk away. And then he saw a group of little little tiny kids coming up the right. walkway. He didn't want them to be disappointed, so he went back and he emptied like half of his sack into the bowl for them. Oh. And he says, he left the good candy. He says, like, some of the flavors of Skittles and the Snickers bars, because you don't want to leave the Smarties. Look at How that. adorable is he? I mean, seriously. That is really nice. So... It's a small thing, but I thought it was just darling. And it's that that's the kind of kid that you, you're so proud that you raised. Exactly. And you know what I would do? Cause, because you have all this video, uh, I'd find the rotten kids and go track them down to their house and talk to their parents about them. This is the footage. This is the footage of your horrible child. What have you raised? <laughs> really? So I come up with this happy life-affirming thing and you instantly have to go to vengeance on the bad children? Yin and yang. That's all we're talking about. All right, let, imagine this. So you've got you and like three of your favorite people. You're going downtown. All of the lights are on now, all over the place. Not just Temple Square, but every, up oh, and down every right. street, and it's exquisite. Right. You stop first at Christopher's Prime Steakhouse. You have and an have am a amazing meal. dinner. Because what's better than Christmas steak? Nothing. That's true. Or lobster corn dog. Christmas lobster. I, okay, in any case, the appetizers and the sides are always my favorite there anyway. But you have an amazing dinner. You're walking around downtown. You're feeling kind of cool like, we just created a fabulous tradition because we're fabulous people. Well, it all starts by just dropping a comment on the show today. And then we give away dinner for four at Christopher's Prime Steakhouse every Friday because we love you. And there's no better way to thank you than with meat. So uh, you can do this on the Gephardt Daily Facebook page, Gephardt Approved, or on the Todd and Aaron Facebook page. Say something, say hi, drop a comment, you're done, and you can move on with your day. And at the end of the week, we call a name and hopefully it'll be yours. All right, coming up next, uh, prepare yourself. Uh, you take a bird, you shove in another bird, you shove that bird in another bird. And it's called Tur Duncan, and we're going to show you how to make it coming up next. Ew. <laughs> Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream, brought to you by Utah Credit Approval. Bad things happen to good people helping you on the road to good credit with just the right car. Mm. Go to utahcreditapproval.com or call them at 801-404-7201. Also brought by Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel has an epic sale on cruises through the 21st of October. You can get a hotel and everything you can imagine just for less than the price you would of simple airfare. You have to talk to them first at columbusvacations.com. And all Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com.
Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and GephardDaily.com? So, Jeff, you do mortgages, right? I do. How do you do? Well, you go to our website, 4MinuteMortgage.com, fill out the application, and we'll call you within one business day. The whole thing takes about a month to start to finish. We went to the bank. They got really personal. They went through all of our personal records and all of our finances. And then there was that little deal about the $8,000 closing cost. <laughs> it took like four months. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. At All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air, we have All Utah Plumbing Bucks. Check us out at allutahplumbing.com. All right, so we're now entering the turkey season, the turkey week, the week of turkeys. And I, I want to do some. I want to do some because I, I you usually... You just said something three times turkey, in a row. Turkey, slightly turkey, different. It's turkey, 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 turkey. So I want to do oh, something before this. I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a gift right now. And I know it's early, and I usually don't talk about Christmas before Thanksgiving, but I'm going to do it right now. And what better gift could I give you or we give you than a family memory, right? I mean, a big family memory. Something that will never be forgotten, even without video. But I'm going to give it to you right now. Especially if you have teenagers and under, okay? And what I want you to do is on Thanksgiving when you're cooking the bird, before you slip it into the oven, I want you to go to the store and I want you to get one of the little the little hens, the little... Um, squabs? Squabs. They're like, the, you've seen them. Little Cornish hens. They're Cornish hens. They're about this big and they're like a frozen block. And I want you to thaw that and I want you to put it inside the turkey when you put the turkey in the oven. All right, now, <laughs> your mom even thought this was friggin' hilarious. That's oh, wait, wait, not psycho. this, not this, guys, not this yet, not this yet. Stop. Thank um, you. Thank you, sorry, I messed you up. Um, so what you do is you put the small bird inside the turkey, and then you go ahead and cook it. And then, as the, uh, the thing is, uh, you say, yeah, you call your kids over and say, you know what, we think you should help carving the turkey this year. And they go through, and they say, get everything out from inside, and they pull out the baby bird, and they're all like, it's pregnant. <laughs> Some of these teenagers were bawling. Oh. They had their faces buried in the curtain, sobbing with their shoulders shaking. They're like, we had, they had a baby. We cooked the baby. And their parents have to go, y you know, turkeys lay eggs. And they you have it all on video. And now you have a family memory. Of traumatizing your children? Oh my gosh, how funny is that? You are so dark. Is that good? That's good. That is awesome. So the squabs are about $2.29. Yes. Priceless. And therapy is $125 oh an hour. Isn't so that funny? That'll All right, be great. so uh, one year, one year uh, for Aaron's family, which I cook for. Um, You've done this like six or seven years in a row. This is the first year you won't do it. I'm no, very sad this about is, it. You'll see why. Uh, it's, it's exhausting. It's wonderful. Um, so basically, uh, it's a turducken, and it comes from the, the fair city of uh, in the country. And uh, basically, it's you take a uh, chicken and you put it. I put a chicken and a duck, and then the duck and a turkey, and then you sew it back up with cornbread stuffing in between. You'll see this, and uh, and then you. Uh, the one trick is you get the turkey deboned except for the leg. The well, let's show. We'll talk about deboning. Okay. okay. This is how it? you make it. Okay. This is how you make it. All right. This is what a turkey looks like with no bones. Uh, I had a butcher do it because it's an involved process. Matter of fact, two of them were working on it at the same time. Uh, $10 it cost me to have them do this and lay it all open. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do layers of turkey, dressing, duck, dressing, and then chicken on top. We're going to sew the whole thing back up. Looks like Frankenstein, and it should be pretty tasty. All right, let's get started. First, the dressing. All right, salt and pepper and season every single layer. This is the cornbread stuffing. Cornbread stuffing, the usual. I put in some apples, though, because of the duck. I thought it'd be good. And pears and some, uh, some craisins. So there's sweetened cranberries. 
just a few to give it some color and we'll put a layer of this on now. It's like spackling. First layer on, now I need the duck. This is a duck that I've rendered off just a little bit of the, uh, the breast fat because, well it's not a lot, but where is it going to go? Because it's not going to brown inside the turkey, so I did that. Now we're just going to put a layer of these, put them like this so you can see them better. I wasn't sure how many I was going to need. Things like that. Things like that. That's enough. Alright, so. And once again, a little salt. And pepper. And another layer of right, At this point, I should tell you that this is not an instructional video. This is, a, oh my god, what have I got myself into video. Uh, this is so I can document this, so I can look back and figure out where it all went wrong. All right, so I used uh, the uh, thighs of the chicken, deboned and de I took the skin off uh, because I, I like dark meat, and I thought it'd be better flavor inside uh, of the turdunk can. This is the can part, can can chicken. Um, I'm gonna put another layer of stuffing over this, and then I'm gonna try to sew it all back up and make it look like something. This will not be pretty. If you have a weak stomach, please turn your head. All right. This is the part where it all goes terribly wrong, and I wish I had four more hands. What I've done is I've gone to the store and I've gotten a needle, a pretty big needle. I got butchered, butchered twine. And I'm not sure if I'm just going to try to sew it up or if I'm going to end up wrapping it all the way around it. Um, uh, I'm going to try this method first. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm ready to operate. Get the feel for this first. Oh yeah, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> oh man. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over here. No, I'm not. I'm going to put it in this cradle. That's what I'm going to do. Like this. Good lord, it's heavy. Alright, there we go. That'll help. Well, that looks totally normal, doesn't it? Alright. Time to sew. All right, after consideration on sewing or using uh, these, you picked one up for like 99 cents. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot easier. And then I think Frankenbird uh, might actually uh, live. Right, this is working out better than I thought. <laughs> does, does look like a creature though, does it? <laughs> more. There it is. The Turduncan, I know that it uh, it will scare children because it looks so bizarre. Four and a half hours in the oven. Let's see what happens. Wow. I know the process looks horrifying, but it's it's <laughs> it freaking it's freaking delicious. It you, really is. You need like eighteen hands to get that thing sewn up. And it no, does. but you were worried the first year, and you actually made another turkey too, right. thinking no one's going to eat it because they'll be freaked out. Always do the backup. Nobody touched the turkey, the other turkey, the everyone normal the one. Yeah, everyone wanted the turducken. Right. I was ticked off there wasn't more leftovers because it was amazing. It was kind of cool, but, but man, it, it, I think it's the deboning that terrorizes you, isn't it? I went to a professional, but um, you Schneider's, don't want to try that Schneider's. yourself. Yeah. No, because mm -hmm. think about if you've ever deboned a chicken, you know it's fairly. Uh, and I went to Schneider's, and there was a counter you couldn't see behind, and I said, "Here's the turkey," and it was like twenty five pounds, you know. And he gets it down there, and all you can see is elbows doing this, and then he calls in two other people, and they're just like working this thing over, and you can't see it, and all of a sudden it's like, there it is. You said it, it looked like a crime scene. It did look like a crime scene. But anyway, but that's, that's how you do it. But afterwards, it's delicious, and that's yeah. all that matters. I'm, I'm sorry I don't have a finished shot, but everybody tackled the thing and started eating it. Oh, now it's our fault? It is your fault. Whatever. Uh, you know what I got yesterday? Uh -huh. um, 
The nice thing about our house is when the mail comes, our dog turns itself inside out and screams. Because so we always know that it's... It's a mail slot, and anything coming in, to invading our home uh, in the mail is uh, drives them crazy. It's great, too, a moment of quiet silence in the afternoon. So where did this come from? Until. Bed, bath, mm, beyond. Um, and uh, I was just kind of flipping through it, and I saw, um, I saw a, a hair dryer. We have a picture of the oh, hair like dryer. dryer. Yeah, a blow okay, dryer sure. for your hair. Sure. Because it's a really cool thing. Sure. Um, and then I saw the name. Do we have okay. a picture of that? Um, we have a picture of that. Um, uh, and it's a Dyson. Oh, like our vacuum. Yeah, like our we, vacuum. We invested in a See? Dyson vacuum. Oh, that's the uh, little. Um, oh, that's the other one. That's the motorized vacuum, yeah. right? Uh -huh. um, so, so the hair dryer. Let's just start with the hair dryer. Hey, hang on. I know what I'm going to do. So, there's a hair dryer right there. How nice is that? It's pink. Right? Now, here's the scary thing. Uh, uh, can you see the price? Can you see $400? 400 bucks. For a blow dryer? There it is. And if you see $400 for yes. a blow dryer. $400. And, and it says... I think I paid $9 for mine, and I've had it for like eight years. <laughs> the hair dryer. Rethought. That's what it says. Four hundred dollars for a blow dryer. Yeah, it's got no fan, so it's quiet. That's one of the big things. Oh, okay. Well, that's worth an extra twenty dollars. Three three ninety nine. And Dyson. So basically, is... we're going the opposite direction. This is if you don't like Black Friday and you don't want to save money, but you'd actually like to spend additional money for the holidays. Or it's all the money you have, and you can get Black Friday over with one purchase. Pretty much, you're all getting a single Dyson blow dryer. And what else was you? Well, were, I think they're the first. Fashions? They're the first people to really up the scale and and sexify a vacuum cleaner. We actually invested in a Dyson because we had some lead dust, and it was the only one that had the filter. That, HEPA, HEPA, HEPA. That, that could pull it together HEPA and filter. hold everything. And so I was willing to invest mega, in for that. Mega HEPA. But, and it was like four ninety nine. Yeah, I but, mean, it was a lot. But like, you can't kill it with a gun. So it Where was is it good. now? I don't know. Probably back with the lead dust. I don't know. But four hundred dollars for a blow dryer. Right. Now, how much? What? How much is the little automatic vacuum? Now here's the show other thing. Go ahead and show the, the robot vacuum. Now you've seen these, and and they're all over the place on YouTube and stuff right now. Where the cat's sitting on it, or the kids, <laughs> it's dragging the kid around. You know, funny. And you know the ones you see, it goes, it, it docks at this charging station, then goes out and kind of learns your house, and then it just runs while you're not there. Oh, by the way, there's only one thing that kills uh, these machines, which is dog poop <laughs> on the floor. It kills me too. It just runs right. <laughs> uh, so I thought, wow, that's kind of cool, but it's a Dyson. How much would it be? Uh, Show it again. It's got to be at least over 500 bucks. It's the though, right? Lamborghini. It's the Lamborghini of it's, automated yeah. vacuums? $999. You're lying. I do not lie. $1,000? 1000 bucks. Like the little Roomba thing, I think, is under 100 bucks now, and it's $1,000. $1,000. Unless it's giving me a massage while it vacuums. Or, I'm not... or more. <laughs> what? <laughs> You could hire a someone. Thousand dollars. Could hire someone to, to vacuum your house cheaper house than the Dyson. Cheaper. Yeah, for a year, easy, for a year. So, wow. How much shopping are you gonna you gonna do in the stores? Because you don't believe I know you don't believe in Black Friday except for that one time when evidently you drank too much and you I went. I couldn't help myself. And you drove someone to the airport. I, no, I drove Daddy up to the care center okay. and then on the way. On the way back, you disappeared. Target was just sitting there, and, and I was driving right by, and I went, now they're not going to have anything left because it's like 1030 at night. And we're all sitting at the table in our house and on the couch and stuff, and everybody's eating pie. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, this is a lot of work to cook for all these people, but it was worth it. And look at our family time. And we've got, where's Erin? Where, where'd she go? Well, that was like two hours ago. We're eating pie. Where, where did she go? And I then, bought two iPads for the children for Christmas. It was for the children. So she took her dad back to the care center, and then she bought things for the kids. It was for the children. The children. 
No mother would judge me. You're going to do more online, though, aren't you? I'm not going into the stores. You have to. You're forgetting. You're forgetting the whole Black Friday debacle with me, aren't you? Oh, Aaron. Oh, he caused a riot. No, I did not cause a riot. Which it, mall? I'm not going to say because I don't know if they sue anymore. But it was one of the local malls, and it was back when they went. We're going to open at 10 o'clock on Thanksgiving night, and we're going to stay open the entire night. Front page news. And so they wanted, we started by hosting it and <laughs> it kicking let, it off, and it there was this gigantic on. thing. And then they had me record all of the special, the specialty stuff that would go through the mall and, and you know, specials and things. And everyone, and we should have known because we were looking at the crowd ready to come in, and they looked really like they'd had a few drinks first to maybe keep warm outside or something because people How many came, were there? Oh, there were thousands. People mm -hmm. came plowing through. They were knocking stuff over. They were shoplifting. They were knocking over the security guards. And it made CNN, and they're showing just the melee. And overall, but you can hear my voice going, Hi, it's Aaron and Todd. How are you doing? We're so happy you're here. And it's like and you're seeing like the security guy like put his knee in this woman's back while he handcuffs her. It was That's just awesome. That was like the worst memory ever. And I, I just want to say. As a matter of fact, our old so producer sends me a clip of that CNN story there. every year. I wasn't there, and I'm so happy about that. Aaron slept in the next morning, and I just remember going to her. I went, you're on CNN. <laughs> oh. I'm glad you find that so amusing. Oh, I'm going to become one of those people. My Christmas shopping is done. I'm all done. How much do you hate me right now? Quite a bit, don't you? What are you going to be? <laughs> I'm all done with my shopping. You know why? Because I'm getting you nothing. It's all about the season. And it's all over now. It's like, I'm done. I save money. I'll give people a hug. We have a limit this year, don't we? Money-wise. We always say we have a limit. We always have a limit. And we say, no, you can't, you know, no extras and just a nice gift. And the kids get their stuff. And then... Her and I just do a thing and, like, say, we'll do a little trip. You and I will do a husband-wife thing. Oh, I like Carolyn's idea. She said that they that they actually spent all of their money on, like, a trip to Disneyland an every experience. Christmas. Yeah, and they do an experience instead. And she says she gets the kids a couple little things to play with on the plane. <clears throat> right. But they know, that, they know that the big experience to Disneyland is their thing. That's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. We can't do that because we told our kids that Disneyland burnt down. It did. Tragically, everybody, Sorry. but everybody's okay. It's fine. They, it's and just not going to be open for a long time. And all the characters are living on a farm with our dog that we used to have. <laughs> Maybe we should move on now. Um, uh, the North Korea. This is pretty. They've amped it up. A I don't know a how bit. to handle that. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's their the deal? Uh, they just decided that uh, that President Donald Trump had insulted um, Kim Jong-un enough that they've decided that he, Kim Jong-un has decided that he's going to sentence Trump to death. How, so how, does that, how does that work? His regime-run newspaper says that the U.S. president is a hideous criminal after he said that North Korea was a cruel dictatorship and that Kim was, quote, short and fat. So because of the war of words <sighs> they, and insulting him, they say that he, is now, he, that he has now officially declared the death penalty on the president and called him a coward for visiting, for canceling the visit to the inter-Korean border. So I guess apparently they've decided that after hurting the dignity of the supreme leadership, it was time to issue the death penalty on President Trump. So he should know that he's just a hideous criminal sentenced to death by the Korean people, he added. Right. It was a fairly <coughs> lengthy, rambling speech. From so hope that Jong -un. doesn't happen. So yeah, there you go. The, and uh, the, uh, the 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 military's in trouble, by the way. Why? Because they did something that was naughty. No. We'll tell you what it is next. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor Mortgages Made Simple. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, you'll find out that you can get a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600. Fink and McGregor, also by The Vein Clinic. If you go to theveinclinic.com, you can schedule an appointment and find out some amazing options for pain-free removal of varicose veins and spider veins. Your legs can look great again with The Vein Clinic. And also by Black Diamond Experts. They're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. And they also have a brand new store up in Ogden now. If you'd like to reach them, you can go to blackdiamondexperts.com. <laughs> A 
apply today and drive away. Writers in the sky. It is good. Hi, we're back, Todd Naren Show. Um, this happened in uh, in Washington, um, uh, the state. Well, you know, you know the sky the writers. The navy, the navy was out and they were doing maneuvers, <laughs> which is just a funny thing. And anyway, they're out at the uh, the naval air station at, at uh, Widley Wid, Widley uh, Island, and so they're it's flying. It's Island. Whatever, and they're flying their stuff around and their junk and. Uh, Two of the pilots decided that they they wanted to try their hand at something. Do we have something we can show? Um, no, but you know this explains. You know they use the vapor trail, and then they actually maneuver the the airplane in different ways to make to spell something out in the sky. Right. If you remember, and they've done proposals before, which I thought was really sweet. Yeah, and they've yeah. done hearts, and they'll do symbols in the sky. Yeah. And uh, like in Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, surrender Dorothy. Um, that was a broom, though. That was difficult. It's difficult to do, and so um, they thought, well, you know, we'll just goof around and do this with multi-billion-dollar planes. Now we can't show you a picture of it because you want to use the whiteboard, don't you? Go get the whiteboard. They had to issue an apology after several people had called the naval base, asking why said image was done in the sky by the sky riding pilots. And, uh... Hang on just a second. I gotta... Kids are watching. I got my... Um... Oh, I got it. I got it. Hang on. Hang on. One second. Because we do have kids. You know, there's kids out there, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to just describe it? All right, so, um, Arby's, we got the meat, um, and if you think of the Arby's logo, it looks like this. All right, so, this is the Arby's logo, and if you kind of do that and make those, uh, that's pretty much what you got, and they made that in the sky. You know, <laughs> I'm going to make this good. Free plug for Arby's. They got the meat. Um, All right, it's time to go to Daisy and the Gemma. Right, before you do that. Um, and I, I looked at it, and I said, so the first thing that came to mind was it's half of the Mile High Club. Now you can go. Time to go to Daisy in the Gephardt Daily Newsroom. She is brought to you by Fink and McGregor Mortgages Made Simple. Just go to fink-mcgregor.com and uh, you'll find out that you can answer a few questions within four minutes and you have your mortgage options all ready to go. Also by The Vein Clinic. If you go to theveinclinic.com, um, you can set an appointment. There are some amazing things they can do now with all of your varicose veins and spider veins. You can actually get legs that don't look like 20 years older than the rest of you. It's amazing. I just went there last week. And also by Black Diamond Experts. They are experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. You will be glad you called an expert, blackdiamondexpert.com. Daisy, my dear, what's going on today? Good morning, Todd and Aaron. Hello again, everyone. Here's a look at national and world news for Monday, November 20th on GebhardDaily.com. Charles Manson, the former cult leader whose followers killed seven people during a two-day murder spree in 1969, has died at the age of 83. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation said Manson died of natural causes at 8.13 p.m. PST on Sunday at a hospital in Kern County. Matson and his followers spent the last 46 years in prison. They were spared the death penalty when it was temporarily banned by the Supreme Court in 1970. A U.S. Border Patrol agent died Sunday after being injured while responding to an undisclosed incident along the Texas-Mexico border. Agent Rogelio Martinez and his partner were near Interstate 10 in Van Horn, Texas, when they were critically injured. They were both rushed to a local hospital where 36-year-old Martinez later died. Exactly how bo the border agents were injured and the nature of the incident has not been divulged. Donald Trump tweeted the incident was further proof of America's need to build a border wall with Mexico. 
Trump also said Sunday that he should have left three UCLA basketball players remain in jail in China after one of their fathers questioned his actual role in gaining their release. Trump criticized LeVar Ball, father of UCLA's LiAngelo Ball, for downplaying his efforts with the Chinese government. Trump had previously claimed he was directly responsible for the players' release and openly suggested they needed to thank him, which all three players eventually did. After hearing LeVar Ball was questioning his role, Trump tweeted he should have left the three players in jail. That's it for now. For more headlines from across the country and around the world, go to getpartdaily.com. And for now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. Great. Thank you, Daisy, my dear. Okay, uh, Black Diamond Experts, I was talking about them the other day because they just put up a new place in Ogden, so they're even closer if you like Weber County. You would like to have some access to these guys. They're there for you. But what always cracks me up is I always end up running into one of their trucks at some ungodly hour of the day or night. I mean, we almost always see them driving to work, which is really funny to me. Because literally when they say, we're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they, they really mean it. And every one of the guys I've ever talked to has some awesome story of like Christmas Eve and their wasty in someone's basement or like you know they'd have to leave Thanksgiving dinner and they're like trying to eat it in the van going to somebody's house because something exploded but this is what's nice about these guys with electric plumbing heating and air there's pretty much nothing they can't fix in the house except explosions that's your problem sorry but these guys are licensed bonded and insured you're safe to have them in your house you feel good about them they know what they're doing they're fun to talk to they're a little strange sometimes but that's okay and when they give you their their word it's you can count on it because that's what they do. They don't finish a job until it's to your satisfaction. So if you want to talk to these guys, they're the ones you put on your expert list of stuff, of people you call when you need help. So just put them on yours. It's blackdiamondexpert.com. Okay, now, I was thinking about this the other day. Churches have the same challenge almost anybody else in the world does. As far as what? They have to come up with, like, snazzy advertising to get people to notice them. It's not something you usually think of as a church would, being snazzy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's true, but they have to be attention-getting. They have to be sort of like cutting edge because and there's so many other things that capture your attention. Now, if you want to get someone into your house of worship, you got to deliver. It's competitive. you got to deliver. So uh, some of the most epic church signs that we saw this week come up in such a fashion. Let's do the pictures if you can. All right. First one. Try Jesus. If you don't like him, the devil will take you back. Oh, mm -hmm. funny. Always a good one. I know. I keep using my name in vain. I'll make rush hour longer. Oh. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Life stinks. We have a pew for you. Ah, the pew joke. <laughs> Oh my I gosh, liked it. that guy's gonna burn in hell. And my my personal favorite, and I'm not sure they were paying attention when they put this one together. Maybe they were just being more matter of fact. But it says, "Give oh until God. it quits hurting," because it's their fundraiser. Parking in your rear. <laughs> <laughs> On the bright side, no uh, one will forget that sign. Oh my god! So technically, you might have. There you go. Still fulfilled your purpose. Alright. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, coming up an, next. We have an epic mug mugshot. Mugshot of the week. It's pretty impressive, I've got to be honest with you. And also, Granite School District gets to explain a missing five year old. So this is gonna be fun. Well, let's do that. Come we'll take that next. next. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, there's a short four-minute quiz, and at the end of it, you can find a whole array of mortgage options, and someone will call you back from Fink and McGregor within the next business day. Also by Utah Credit Approval. Go to utahcreditapproval.com because they know that bad things happen to good people, but that shouldn't stop you from repairing your credit and getting a reliable automobile at utahcreditapproval.com. And also you, all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. John has 24-7 service because he knows that emergencies can happen any time of the day or night. And right now they have a $69 special to check out all your heating systems to make sure they're working well. Just go to allutahplumbing.com. So the Partridge family. Oh no, this is so sad. David Cassidy. Now where is he? He's now, in the hospital. He was, still, a, right? he, was in the, he was in the Partridge family. Obviously everybody remembers him, but he had this huge long career that people don't remember. And the funny thing about him, remember his little brother Sean Cassidy? They both had that teen pop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Sean Cassidy turned into this genius TV writer. He was the sh he's a show fixer. He goes in on flagging shows and he fixes them. When's so, he showing up? So he actually put together a show for uh, Sean. 
Come here. Okay. There's no helping us, honey. It's true. But uh, so he put together one for David, uh, I think it was David Cassidy, Man Undercover. And you may not remember, but it actually ran for several seasons. I do remember that. But remember we had, in, we had uh, David in for uh, one of Aaron's Nights Out. Remember? One of the things we did, yeah. Yeah, Aaron's Slumber Party. Yeah. He is a te- he's a petite flower. He's Most a, stars are. Why it's is that? surprising, Tom Cruise, like this tall. They're petite. They are small. They're really small. And how do they find these statuesque women uh, that stand next to him and they're like two feet taller? Oh, then, this is so very sad. He He's 67 years old. This is really scary. He suffered almost complete organ failure. Um, he's in a medically induced coma in the hospital, and this is very sad. They're hoping for a liver transplant, um, but they say that it's possible if the, he can get one in time. Right. Uh, but it's 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 really sad because this is where he's at the point now. Of, like, literally, they're trying to sort of keep him in stasis long well, enough to find him one. Right now, I mean, he's been doing a Vegas show forever. It seems like, yeah. you know, and, and that's what he, that's where he found, you know, like a lot of stars do, they find their place and they do for show for like two years or something, mm-hmm. Celine Dion. Yeah. Uh, it's very much like that. Um, the, very sad. I, I, Susan Day, who played the daughter, mm-hmm. She, mm-hmm. she was, I had a crush on her. Uh, and then, of course, the worst thing to come out of that show is Danny Bonaducci. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But. And once again, a single mom. Was that the first time they did a single mom? They showed and wrote a, a oh, story yeah, that's right. about a single mom. And her children on a school bus who on all sang. Because that's sang. not exhausting at all. Except for the little girl. She just kind of, the tambourine. And they kept switching the boy out. The little boy. Like, yeah, they he did. was like a different face every year. Yeah. It's like maybe he had a lot of plastic surgery. Maybe the, maybe the audience will forget what he looked like. It was pretty sad. All right. <laughs> uh, this is a little awkward. And once again, as a mother of a six-year-old, the, I, every time I hear these stories, it's like I, I I have to go hide in the closet for a while and hold myself because I freak out. Because this, this could be our kids. Uh, Greta Schooldristic is, quote, reevaluating protocols oh, for young elementary school students. That's never good. Who need to leave early after a kindergartner walked out of school and hopped on a UTA bus last week. He was missing for more than an hour before anyone found him. How did he get on the bus without paying? I'm not sure. He's five. He's small. Maybe he just kind of scooted in like a ninja. True, true. But, uh, you know, and I I do feel for Ben Horsley. He's the spokesperson for Granite School District because you have to come up with any kind of phrasing that doesn't destroy everybody involved we lost your kid he's like it's a very scary situation especially for the family and we can certainly understand their concern what do you say Uh, these are our kids too and so it was a really scary moment all right so you have a group of five-year-olds like herding cats i understand that and they keep them all contained and it's like i understand that Oh, so this is awful. I mean, but. because there's security footage, there's camera footage. Oh, no. His grandmother had shown up to take him to the doctor, and apparently he had just walked out the back. They have the footage of him, they're like, oh, oh my God. And grandma's okay. waiting at the other door? Yeah, yeah. so oh. they're freaking out. So they, I guess they sent staffers all over, and then they're calling police, and everyone's frantic, and everyone's searching. But it took a good hour, I guess, before the, the UTA bus driver, fi- and it was he was all the way in West Valley City, and I guess he had fallen asleep. Long day, he's five years old. And the bus driver finds him, and he's like, "Where'd that kid come from?" Yeah, and so. And why didn't he pay to get on the bus? He called. He called police, and and you know, it got st- sorted out. But there's a question of, yeah, how did you just let the kid walk out of the school by himself? It happens. No, it shouldn't happen. That's the point. You want, you want our best lost kid story? And let's be honest, at my daughter's school, they would they would take me down before they'd let me take her out without signing her out. This so is true. They, they, wouldn't. Would, they would tackle me first. And so they don't yeah. let me take my own kid out because look at it, me. Um, well, so I, I will tell you, the lost I have to have some compassion. The kid's okay, so now I can have compassion as, as opposed to outrage. Okay. Um, but our son, Zachy and McLean, um, are both nonverbal and they have uh, autism. And so they take a little more care, especially McLean. He, McLean is a goer, and without you, he just will go. And we're at Snowbird uh, with our family. So there's like 10 of us, right? And we're staying there. And I said, I got up early. I said, I want some coffee. I'll take the boys with me. Now, they were about, how old was? I think they were nine. Nine? Ten. Not even 10. And so I said, I'll go downstairs in the lobby, and we'll get some coffee. And we all get on the elevator, no problem. We go down, and I'm, okay, you got to keep an eye on. And I go down and get a cup of coffee, get back on the elevator, going back to the room. And I go up, and I get to the sixth floor, and the door's open, and I've got my coffee, and I step out, and 
Zachy steps out and I turn around and the last thing I see is McLean smiling in the back of the elevator like this as the doors close. I run to the room. We put everybody on alert. I grab a guy, poor, poor security guy, grab his walkie-talkie from him, start communicating. I think there was like 17, 18 stories in this hotel. <laughs> it was horrible. And then, of course, the happy ending is we found him shoplifting at the gift store in the lobby. So, good parenting skills. That's me. Oh, you want to see it? Do you want to see the monk shot of the week? Yes. And it's only Monday? The, you're not going to top this one this week. The I'm guy sorry. carjacked. Just, here he is. I'm guessing that the arrest was with extreme prejudice. I think so. That is some epic hair. So wasn't his hair. That is some epic He carjacked. Hair. He carjacked someone and they didn't like it. And so the car jackie um pushed his head against the, a couple times. the windshield a bunch of times a bunch of times that is some serious hair yeah. i mean that's that's hair that took effort that's hair that took attention and time right right because right. that's some serious hair is it maybe he shortened he felt like he wanted to enhance his height and maybe i have no be idea a bigger, you know taller because he's i i have a question yes because i don't i don't understand this um what is the make Sephora. Sephora. Sephora is like Disneyland for what is people Sephora? who like makeup. All right. Now, my girlfriend Erin is like a makeup artist, and if you talk to her about it, she makes this high pitched noise that's understandable only to bees. It's like. <gasps> so is it designer? Well, it's no, it's every. Because I have a story. I have it's a like, story. It's like every possible makeup line in the entire world, but most of these are extremely expensive, high end items. This is where you go if you're going to splurge. I mean, this is like the the really cool stuff that's made of baby chinchillas and and like Guam or something. I don't know, but lizard sweat. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really the expensive. That makes more stuff. sense now to the story because um, evidently mom wasn't watching the kid very well. Uh, they were in a fancy department store. Remember those? And um, evidently she got her head turned and was doing something else. And the kid got into and destroyed $1,300 worth of makeup. Oh, my God. <laughs> How long was the woman's back turned? I don't. I don't know, but that looks like those look like finger paints. That looks like wow. watercolors that you get when you're a kid and all the circles. And evidently, the child went into the brand new packaging as well. Yeah, she and did. And started breaking that stuff up. Because she wanted to see if there's some new colors That's available. That's right. Guess how they tracked her down. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the description was kind of great. Hey, and you got a kid who looks like Picasso drew her? <laughs> yeah, that would be her. And then the oh, glitter man. footsteps. The oh. glitter footsteps leading down the aisle. in the stir people caught her. And then mom was, it was brought to her attention. I, I feel like a slightly less horrible parent now. I'm feeling just slightly better about myself. And, you know, that stuff happens. Uh, that happens, uh, you know, our kids would grab stuff off the shelves when you're at the supermarket, like every kid does. But fortunately, never $1,300 worth of makeup. And, you and see, I'm deeply relieved. And, and I know this is mean, but you see other kids doing it, and you let them. Because they're not yours, right? And you're like, it makes you feel better, doesn't it? And the kid's like ripping into a box of donuts or, you know, doing whatever. At Smith's one day, you know the bulk candy section? And Smith's, they have it tucked underneath the escalator. It's kind of like the secret place. Uh, I remember coming around and there was a kid there just shoving it into his mouth. He looked like a chipmunk. Well, you know, it's open. There's no packaging. I, Maybe he thought it was samples. And I remember our eyes met. And we both froze. And I slowly turned and walked away. <laughs> Giving him that moment. It's not my kid, I don't care. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for joining us today on the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream. Um, we got comments. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was this eye contact that's like, are you gonna screw with me? And I went, no, I'm not. Walk away. Um, we've got comments on Facebook. Thanks for watching and following along, by the way, um, uh, about the turducken um, and how uh, amazingly gross that was. So I thought we'd leave you today with the, the shorter version. So getting ready for, for Thanksgiving, you got to shop today. You guys have a great day, right? I can't believe you left the kid there with the bolt candy. I'm so happy. You're a bad man. Here, watch. We'll see you tomorrow.